You know, it's been a bagillion years since I've done a video. And I was going to do them a lot. But then, hey, you know, the spring came last spring. Um, I moved away from England and then I moved to South Carolina, which I may or may not have told you that I was living with my parents, which is totally cool when you're my age. Do you know what you call that person a fraggle? It's like, because do you remember Down at Fraggle Rock? Down at Fraggle Rock. It was like a Muppet show and then the fraggles live in the basement. And so like if you live in the basement of your parents' house, you're a fraggle. So um, that was actually my nickname for the couple months I was living with my parents. It's fraggle. So it's totally fine. I'm totally cool with that. I'm totally cool with being a fraggle. Sometimes, you know, fraggles are the best people sometimes. Some of my best friends are actually fraggles. Actually, my two best friends are fraggles. I love you guys. Um, nothing's wrong with being a fraggle. <laughs> as long as your parents like buy awesome groceries and let you eat them. But anyway, beside the point, I am no longer a fraggle. I'm living in Colorado now in Boulder and all set up. Everything's all tucked around and everything. And I've unpacked my wool. I actually have you know a nice stash to dive into to make yummy things. So after I moved back from England, there was um, and I was a fraggle. Um, I didn't admit that before, right? Because I, when I was a fraggle, I didn't want to say I was a fraggle, but now, now that I'm not a fraggle, I'm pretty fine saying that I was a fraggle. Nothing's wrong with fraggles. Okay, being a fraggle is a choice, man. It's a conscious choice, Lloyd. So anyway, um, when I was a fraggle, I didn't have any wool, and I was talking to my friend, Spilly Jane. I'm sure you know her. She does... Um, amazing mittens and socks with like just everything you can imagine on them from ice cream to gnomes to what have ya. Um, and she was, she works with nitpicks a lot. And you know, being in the States again, I was like, oh, I can test this stuff out and see what some what's up. And so I, and it, it's amazing to have kind of every color, you know, every color of the wool so you could sit there and like, oh gosh, the ideas for color work would just go crazy. Anyway, so I was going to do an ebook for them, and one of my favorite things I've ever made before is my meow mitts. Oops! <laughs> ah, it just appeared! Um, my meow mitts! I love these little guys so much. They're literally my favorite thing that I've ever made, and I wear them all the time. And it's really hard not to kind of put everything on these wristies, because they're small like they don't have like stuff getting in your fingers so you can actually knit wearing them and they, they don't like sort of get on your wrist and hit your sweater and everything they're just so tiny and that they're kind of not even there so when you're prints you know when you're like going through the forest like foraging or whatever or like <laughs> doing this and people like I'm a fraggle you know you have freedom of movement which is very important for a fraggle down a fraggle rock so anyway, I decided to do an ebook of a sort of like fairy tale themed kind of thing. Because I kind of like into the fairy tale thing. I thought we could do Red Riding Hood and Three Bears and, blah, 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 and everything. And my Red Riding Hood was like Night of the Living Dead Riding Hood. It was like a no go. So I wrote them and I'm like, I'm so sorry, but those are not happening ever. But what is happening is the Woodsy Association, a little band of crime-fighting animals in the woods. I know you probably think I'm describing too much to this, but they literally fight crime. And this is what they look like. Here's the raccoon. He used to be a thief, but now he's turned his he's turned his um efforts to good. Now he can now he tracks down criminals. And there's Wolf. And with these, I got the idea to add the little charms, like their little power charms, like like their little tails. I guess because I wanted to kind of put the Intarsia tail on, but I didn't want to put the raccoon body. I really wanted them to be kind of like first. And so the tail, it just made sense to like, first I thought of like knitting it down, like extending it, like having I mean, like a tail hanging down, which yeah, it would have been a little weird. Um, then came up with the idea of like little charms 
And um, feel free to make as many as you want. Can you imagine a whole of the tails like going around? That would be weird. I first stitched them on, and then they didn't have the kind of freedom of movement that I was sort of looking for. So then I used a jewelry jump ring. It's a little metallic jump ring, really easy, like the ones you can just literally pry open like that and stick stick it on there. I think the jump ring is what makes it look like, you know, a little charm, a little freedom of movement. Do you want to see the rest? Wolf! Oh. Oh. That one might be, can I say my favorite? But, um, look at this little feather. Freak out. How many of these do you think I made before I came up with that one? A lot, and they were bad. But this one I'm happy with. There is a line of sort of like, you know, straight stitch going up for the stem. But the rest of it's just little stripies. Beep, beep. These are, I've had these for a long time. I've had to keep them kind of under wraps, so I've kind of worn them a bit, so they're a little bit fuzzy. Not too bad, though. You know, and these have been in my suitcase. These have been kind of everywhere. Get on with the show, Stephanie. Badger. These are my because the badger paw look. What? You're messing with me. Um beep, boop, beep, boop. it's just like a little piece of gum or something. It's like a chiclet. Do you remember chiclets? Anyway, so I love this. And I'm Hufflepuff. I know badgers are kind of thing, but I love badger. I'm a badger freak. I just love them. For every reason. Badgers are about the root, they're about the roots. This is a UK badger. Wait, what did I end up doing? Did you know that the badger in England and the badger in the United States are actually different? Um, and uh, I think I did a hybrid because the badger face in the UK is a lot more narrow and then our badger face in the US is more like, hey. I don't know, anyway, I, I kind of made a little hybrid of them because after all, I am half and half. I'm not half and half. I still say some British things. Huh? Anyway. Should I get to the other ones? Who else do we have? Oh, the deer. This one's my favorite. That's a joke, because I've been saying every single one of them is my favorite. It's like a really funny joke. They find it funny. Anyway, so there's the deer. Boom! Um eyes. I wanted to make the eyes really simple so that no matter what your skill for doing sort of embroidery, because I'm terrible with sort of like, I can't do French knots or anything like that. So I really wanted to make the eyes um, easy for everyone to do. So they're really good instructions for doing them. They're basically overhand knots. An overhand knot, you take this and, you know, like you're making a knot, but then you put it through one, two or three times or four times and it says for each one so see and then you pull gently and there's your eye right don't pull it like that because it's going to be too small but just let it kind of it it holds up if you just let it be loose and then the pattern shows exactly where to put you know the line on either side of the line is where you should put these ends in and then tie them in a knot in the back and um I think they came out. I know it seems simple, but like I tried so many eyes because like these eyes were a little more difficult. These are like two duplicate stitches on top of each other with like horizontal straight stitches. And <clears throat> I was worried that's kind of too overwhelming um, for people. So I really wanted to make the eyes as easy as possible. So all the eyes are just overhand knots placed in where the pattern says. Um, was I going to say, oh yeah, I did do stranded work on these. It is possible, or stranded, intarsia. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. Um, stranded or intarsia with this, so I did, I did work those like that. One of my friends named Fiona, knitting Fiona on Ravelry, oop, I just outed her, um, did duplicate stitch on them, and I thought they turned out really, really well. So I actually duplicate stitched these. I know in the Knit Picks pattern, they did the actual color work. You can do them either way. The directions are in there for both. I found the duplicate stitch 
process to be really meditative, 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 med calming. I really loved it. I knit the, knit the, you know, the mitts, and then I just sat with my little things of yarn and, you know, held it up and did like that. And duplicate stitch, you are basically copying each stitch. And I like to work right to left and do my stitches around like that. So, I wanted to make a video just so I could show you guys the charms and show you that they're like when you wear them, they kind of dangle, and maybe you want to see them. And, and who else? This one's my favorite. And this one. You don't have to put any wire in this or anything. The decreases, these have been sitting in a drawer, mind you, but the increases um, should make a pretty nice antler, but you can put wire in there if you want. Um, so in June, I went to TNNA, and my friend Katie and I had a hotel room, and I brought him along because I've been freaking out about these guys, like, wearing them secretly everywhere. And I was like, they need a song, because I always make up songs for all my stuff. So then we kind of pictured them being, like, a crime-fighting, like, gang, and, like, like, the Woodsy Association. So, so I did write a song, and then it's kind of like... We're the Woodsy Association. <laughs> it's not them singing. I, someone told me recently, not recently, but after one of my videos, that my videos are literally unwatchable, and I kind of actually understand what they're talking about. Anyway, without further, further ado, the Woodsy Association song. Association. We fight crime, we scale the highest building. We give out promotional chocolates. Book us for your birthday party. We're the Woodsy Association. We fight crime, we scale the highest building. High. We give out promotional chocolates. Chocolate. Book us for your birthday party. We're the Woodsy Association. We fight this is crime, not cool. we scale the highest buildings. You know what? We give it's out true, though. Promotional chocolates. They do. In my mind, I'm secretly hoping that someone, okay, it's not secret anymore because I'm talking about it, but that someone will do an animation of woodland animals, like climbing through the forest, like fighting crime and like climbing, build, scaling buildings, like the tallest one, and like giving out promotional chocolates, like to further their organization which are like those you know promotional chocolates are the worst <laughs> like ever they're not even chocolate they're like I don't know who sells promotional chocolates but it ain't lint and it ain't Godiva it's like plastics are us sorry is this bad for anyone's business anyway let's be real even if the Woodsy Association really did give out promotional chocolates which I'm sure they would I mean they probably wouldn't be that good And you can also book them for parties and stuff, and they'll show up. Book them for your birthday party. Like, they'll come. They'll probably even bring you a present. Um, any crimes happen at the party, they're probably going to be, like, totally there with, like, a magnifying glass and, like, maybe a flashlight, um, a torch, and so they can solve the crimes. So, so anyway, this this little ebook is up on the Nitpicks website. Woo! And I hope you guys have fun making them. I literally have fun with the whole scenario in my head. And um, yes, it will be with the association too someday. So I hope you guys are having amazing, happy, amazing fall and you're enjoying this autumn. And we made some pumpkin. We carved some pumpkin. Oh my God, don't look at my desk. <laughs> That's essential oil, by the way. That's ridiculous. <laughs> How messy my desk is. Anyway, we made these pumpkins. And um, yeah, this morning when I came upstairs, or downstairs, <laughs> there was a squirrel. And he's like, he was amber. He was so beautiful. And he like, 
he just kept like taking like a bite of one and then he'd go to the next one and take a bite of the other and then go to the next one and take a bite of the other. You do not believe me. And I got a picture. You will not be able to see it. Oh my gosh. Okay, I hope we can see this. See him? There he is after he kind of like ran away a little bit. He's right there. And there's the pumpkin. Oh yeah. Awesome duck, right? So there he is. What? He's so funny. <laughs> anyway, he's really found it to be quite delicious. And I think it's important to give animals during this time because he might hibernate, you know. So make sure they have enough to eat so that their bodies can support themselves while they hibernate. That is your nap, um, actual woodland moment. Someone's going to be like, squirrels don't hibernate <laughs> and they don't eat pumpkins. I don't really know if they do or not. But if they do, that squirrel is going to have a good job of it because he ate his full of the face of my pumpkin. So, happy autumn, happy Halloween, Samhain, All Saints Days, All Saints Day, whatever you celebrate, pumpkin, apple cider, pumpkin pie, caramel apples. This is what I wore when I carved my pumpkin. Where the woods see. Okay, this has gotten bad. Love you guys. Bye. Association, we fight crime, we scale the highest.